Hey, Andy here. Since I got a little bit of time on my hands, this is a video that I've been wanting to make for a little while. And it's tail scale with an operator connecting a service running on Kubernetes out through Tailnet. Uh, for those that are uninitiated, tail scale is a zero config way of creating a VPN to services, machines, and you can actually route subnets across it too, which is really fantastic. Especially when I'm on the road, connecting to my home lab, connecting to other services. I've got it running on my Synology here. I've had it running on little GLI net boxes for uh, connecting to remote labs, remote devices, things like that. It's really, really cool, especially on public Wi-Fi and things like that. Okay. Let's dig in. We're going to install it. I've got a cluster already up and running, AKA a single node cluster running on Harvester. Of course, I'll give it a bunch of memory and CPU. Uh, here it is up and running. So let's do, let's get some pods so I can show you what's going on. So I've got Kubernetes running. I've got a dummy flask app running and I've got Longhorn running just for stateful storage. Uh, you can see, let's do ingress. I got a bunch of, in, I've got one ingress for the flask app. We'll go ahead and pull that up and you can see the world's greatest flask demo. Uh, pretty cool, right? So we've got that running and now let's take a look at the Kubernetes operator itself. So there's a couple of prerequisites, right? So if you go and I can put this in the show notes, but if you go to tailscale.com and then a knowledge base in the Kubernetes operator. What we're going to do is we're going to be exposing a service. So expose a Kubernetes cluster. Nope, we're going to expose a service in one cluster or another. Nope, we're doing that. We're doing the cluster ingress. So expose a Kubernetes cluster workload to Telnet. Okay. Some of the prerequisites to understand though. And let's go back to the operator because we have to install the operator first. First thing we need to do is to create the Telnet policy file with the tags. So let me show you where I've got that. So I'm logged in to my tail scale. You can see my personal email. We go to access control. We can see that I already have the tags already created. Okay. That's the first prerequisite. The second prerequisite is around the OAuth client. So you need to set up the OAuth client with create scope on devices. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into, I believe it's under settings, OAuth clients. I'm going to create a new OAuth client and I'm going to call it KS and I'm going to give it write permission for the device. And then I'm going to hit, um, I'm going to add the tag of the KS. Let me just validate that. So create OAuth, oh, the tag KS operator. So let's change the tag to operator. Let's give it both tags. Not going to be a big deal. And actually, I don't think I need that tag. Go ahead and hit generate client. And it's going to generate. So it's going to give me a client ID and secret. Okay. And I will be deleting this as soon as I'm done with this video. So there's no chance of it ever getting used again. Okay. So then we get into the installation piece and it's really kind of a Helm repo add Helm update in it. So we'll go ahead and do copy this. Let's do a Helm repo update. Uh, Helm repo list. You can see I've got my two Helm charts. We're going to do an update. And then what we need to do is actually to run the Helm upgrade. So I actually have it in some notes and let me just VI the notes, which makes it easier to kind of paste the string in. I will say that that does need to be quoted. Uh, I was playing with this earlier and, and kind of hit that. So client ID and then the secret. And like I said, this is going to be deleted uh, rel relatively quickly and paste that. And before I do that, uh, I'm going to hit done. Let me just save this. What we're going to do is I just want to go to the, go to machines and we can see that I've got three machines. Like I said, I've got my Synology, I've got my laptop here, and then I've got my phone. It's disconnected. It's probably updated or connected. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and apply the operator. So it's pretty easy. What I do wrong? Oh, tack I. Upgrade dash I. Look at me. Cool. Uh, cool. While well, that's loading, and this will this will set in a, in a second once the operator is fully running, we'll see it actually add to the list of machines. And there we go. Good timing, right? One of the things I do want to add, and I was running this earlier, is you should probably set up the magic DNS. So if you go under DNS and you set up your tailnet name, so in my case it's cheetah minnow ts dot net. Uh, what's important about this, and I got to go grab uh, the file, 
But what's important about this is you have to kind of give that that ingress name to make it work. Unfortunately, that's just the way it works. So it's up and running. We can use static manifest if we want, but again, we chose to use the uh, operator. Cool. So let's go to cluster ingress. So this is pretty easy. It just says make sure your service is exposed and then you create a file similar to this. Okay. Um, yep. And so basically all you're doing is connecting the dots. So let me pull up my code. Sorry if it's gonna get wonky for a second. Uh, where'd I have it? There we go. I had it here. So we're going to, I'm going to copy this close, Whoop. hide that file and let's go back to our notes and I'll put the notes in the, in the, into the, the, the video description brain fart this morning. So let's paste that in because one of the things I want to do, and this is what I ran into is that DNS name. So let's go back to DNS, cheetah minnow and let's put it here. All right. So what we're basically saying is, this is the full name we want to use for the ingress object. So Kubernetes knows, hey, when I see a request for this, it knows how to route it. So what we can do now is go ahead and save that. Let's go ahead and cat, do something fancy. EOF. Cool. And now we can see that's added. And if we go back to machines, notice we now have flask and there's that flask.cheetah-minnow.ts.net already created and we can kubectl get first day with the fingers ingress and we can see that, okay, we do in fact have that address, okay? So let's go ahead and if everything's working correctly, we should be able to open up a new tab and voila. You know, I ran into this earlier and, I, and I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why it did this. And so let's troubleshoot it. Oh, there we go. HTTPS. That was it. Huzzah. So. As you can see, because it's over the tail net, it wants to HTTPS all the things. So you can see here, see it says 18. Here we're hitting it locally. We hit refresh, it'll say 19 and then 20. So HTTPS is the note and make sure that you're setting up your DNS name for the minnow net or in your case, the, the tail net. And hopefully you can see how like you can expose individual services across your tail net from a Kubernetes cluster anywhere in the world using tail scale. Uh, this was just one of the fun ones uh, that I wanted to kind of uh, highlight just because of how uh, cool it is in terms of being able to connect all these things together. Uh, as with always, make sure you subscribe and like, and then let me know if there's any other videos you're interested in seeing. I know there's one for adding uh, LDAP authentication directly to RKE2. That is on the list. I'm researching that now. And I hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching.